Hello. It is really late, you guys. I am leaving. Are you ready? I am leaving Hoosier Park Casino. And it is 4.21 in the morning. And, uh, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I'm leaving with money, so that's okay. I'm not leaving with what I came in with, but I'm leaving with not a lot less. You guys ready to hear a story? I, uh, so my friend Lori texted me and she said, hey, meet me at the casino. You guys have heard me talk about Lori on here before. And I said, I'm kind of tired tonight, Lori. She said it would, she's like, well, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll explain it in a second, but she said I had to pay the bill tonight. And I said, okay. I said, what time do you need me to be there? So I want to explain to you guys what the bill is. So I said to Lori and I, I said, she doesn't really understand YouTube. She's only 10 years older than I am, but she doesn't really, she, her husband just recently bought her a uh, smartphone and she just now started texting about three months ago. She loves emojis. And, um, God, I didn't think I would get emotional telling this story. Um, so she said, I, she said, I, we were sitting there tonight and I said, you know, <laughs> um, I was explaining to her what I do at the vlog and I said, I'm sure these people think like, why are you at the casino all the time? And she said, well, do you tell them? And <laughs> like, we have a conversation, you guys and me. She's like, do you tell them that you, uh, oh, by the way, I'm wearing my glasses because I ran out of contacts today because one of my contacts, it doesn't look ripped, but it hurts so bad. So she said, do you come up here or do you tell them that you come to the casino? with me um, so I don't have to be here alone. Sometimes her husband comes with her, but usually um, she comes alone because he works late. And uh, I said, no, I said, I didn't know if you cared if I talked about your story or not. And she was like, yeah, she's like, I, she's like, we're gonna do an interview uh, with this. She got contacted by like a major news source. I can't say who. That's the only thing. She said, you can't say that. She's like, but they're going to ask us to tell our story. So, um, so I was like, you don't care if I use your name and tell this? She's like, no. She's like, please do. Please educate people. I said, okay. So, uh, I know Lori, um, from sobriety. And, um, Three years ago, so Lori is a waitress and her husband is a chef. And like, she's a waitress in one restaurant, he's a chef in like this uh, high-end restaurant. And um, it's about three years ago in the summer, she had two sons and um, she said I could say it. So she had two sons, Matthew and Connor. And uh, I think they were like two years apart. I think Matthew was 23 and Connor was 21. And uh, so anyway, she came home from work and she found Matthew dead um, from an overdose of heroin. she struggled, you know, as a, uh, as a mother in recovery, and she's a great woman, unbelievable woman. She, uh, now donates much of her time working with treatment centers, educating people on opiate abuse, and, um, how quickly people go from eating pills to snorting pills to shooting pills to shooting heroin. And it can be that quick that somebody's gone. And so when I talk on my 
other main channel and I get very upset about jokes being made about addiction and uh, things like that. It's not because I'm in recovery. It's not because um, I worry about, it's not because I'm in recovery, which is part of it, but that's not all of it. It's not just because I've worked in the field for 20 years. It's not just because I've been around drugs and alcohol my entire life. And I mean my entire life from birth. And it's not just because I've known so many people that have overdosed and died or died drinking and driving or killed other people because I have known many. But it's because of the close people to me, you know, whose stories I know. So it was around that time that Lori and I became very close. And, uh... She liked to go to the casino, so we would go to the casino. And, uh, she would... She'd say, I just... Here, I can, you know, drink coffee and... Let my mind go. You know, we can... We sit around the old ladies and we joke and we tell stories about them. And, you know, there's this woman there tonight that we love. And <laughs> Patty, and she came up to us and she's like... Well, I had 800, but I'm 60 down now. And she walked away, you know, and Lori and I were like, oh, 60 down. We had to go take out more money from the ATM. You know, I mean, it's like, I mean, we have a good time. And Lori doesn't have to think about shit when she's there. So a year later... November, I was uh, having a romantic night with my husband, and my phone's going off like crazy. And it's Lori, you know, and I'm thinking, God, she wants to go to the casino bad tonight. <laughs> so Alex was like, just go take the call. So I went outside and let the dogs out, and it was, I think, November. called her back and she said Peter and I said yeah and she said Connor's gone and I said Lori what are you talking about and she said Kevin came home and he was gone and he had overdosed and they had had him in treatment programs and counseling they were so worried about him because he had used with his brother and they knew that and their kids had been in treatment for you know on and on and on they weren't negligent parents they were parents that very much knew what was going on and had their kids in counseling and had their kids in treatment programs and so you can do everything that you want to do to save your child but your child still might not make it you can do everything you want to do to save your family member your boyfriend your girlfriend your husband your wife but they still might not make it and one of the hardest things I have to do is to tell parents when I give speeches, you know, you can do everything in the entire world, but I have to tell you that it may not be enough. And I said, Lori, what happened? And she said, Kevin came home and he found Connor. She said, I found Matthew and Kevin found Connor. She said, my boys are gone. I, I'm not a mother anymore. And I said, oh, Lori. She said, it just, it just keeps on going through my head. It just keeps on going through my head. I'm not a mother anymore. I'm not a mother anymore. She said, what did I do wrong? So funerals are very expensive, especially when you have two children that die a year apart. And, uh... So she has to pay this bill, you know, for the funerals. And so, like she said to me tonight, she said, uh, it's always after I pay the bill that I get very, very sad. The boys each had a cat, too. And both cats died within the same year. Well, one died between the boys passing away and the second cat that Lori loved passed away about six months ago. And uh, 
Lori's like, there's just so much death in this house. She's like, we want to, we want to, you know, but we're so close to paying the house off. She's like, we want to pay the house off and then we want to sell it. We want to be done with it. We want to move and we want to start over. And so she goes and she talks to addicts early in recovery and treatment facilities. She dedicates most Sunday mornings to doing that. And um, she tells her story of what happened to her. And she goes and talks to parents. So that her kids can, you know, continue to live their story. Which is very important to her. But she doesn't like to do holidays. Which I understand. Christmas music was playing tonight. And I, uh, in the casino. And I said... Oh, finally, they're playing Christmas music or something. She said, I hate Christmas music. And I said, oh, Lori, don't be so bitter. Because I forget sometimes, you know. And she said, um, I'm not bitter. She said, I would rather just forget it all together, you know. Just, it's easier when it's not a special day. So when Lori calls and says, hey, do you want to go to the casino? I go, because... That's not a lot to ask for a friend, you know? It just isn't. It's... I always find myself, like, being a little bit more affectionate to my husband afterwards, you know? Like, I know that sounds crazy, but it's like... You never know when somebody's going to be gone. <clears throat> And to have a close friend of mine have gone through that. It's just riddling, you know, for her. She's one of the kindest people I've ever known. She's one of the hardest workers I've ever known. Her husband, you would never even know that he had gone through this. He's so nice. He is so gentle. He's like this six foot four very thin, very in shape giant because he's vegetarian and he's so sweet and so nice, you know, and our country is being rampaged by opiates and uh, opiate addiction and um, it's an epidemic and it's nobody's fault this isn't a finger pointing thing this isn't a she did something wrong he did something wrong they did something wrong this is an epidemic this is about us as a society enabling drug and alcohol use and being okay with it It is about us as a society not continuing to educate ourselves and learn, and I'm part of this as well. I, I, I don't point the finger, I take full ownership. And that there's always more that I can do, you know? I don't really talk a whole lot about uh, like my past addiction work and stuff like that just because you know there are some clients that I know that I still talk to that would totally be fine with me talking about it but then you know it's like I just don't and uh but you know I have a good friend of mine that uh, is the director of a men's halfway house program here in Indianapolis I get calls like this all the time you don't work in the field for 25 years and, you know, people don't call you literally daily for suggestions for treatment programs and halfway houses around the world. There's, you know, I have referred to, you know, Rose Grants in Illinois and the, you know, Hazelden in Minnesota and the Carroll Foundation in um, Pennsylvania and, you know, uh... Gray Wolf Ranch in Washington State and the Wilderness Treatment Program in Montana and Aspen Organization. I, there are so many programs that I have sent to for years and gone and visited and um, that was what I did for a very long time was I would meet with families and find treatment programs that were um, appropriate for their adolescent 
there's I worked with tons of them and I and I never will ever recommend one treatment program that I haven't known somebody that's gone through that has a good experience because and I've never and I've never once gotten a kickback from ever recommending a treatment program so I want to make that clear I do not respect people that get paid for it or that get a kickback from a treatment program. Don't go to, if you're looking for treatment and somebody wants to meet with you and charge you $200 to send you to a treatment program, that's bullshit, okay? I do that stuff for free. A woman contacted me tonight, I've been watching my videos, and she said she's done drinking. And uh, I said, okay. What? And she said, can, she said, I need your help. That was it. I got a direct message. And I said, well, what can I do to help you? And she was like, I'm done drinking. And when those calls come, it's my responsibility, you know? And I said, sweetie, I can't do it for you. I said, you have to make the first move, but I'm more than willing to, to find the resources for you. And she said, okay, I'm ready. And she said, but I don't have any money for treatment, but I'm ready to go to a meeting. So she told me where she was, and I found the phone number for a meeting, and she said she would go. And she said she would follow up and let me know tomorrow how that went. And that's how this starts, one day at a life, one day at a time, that's how we save lives. All of us out there, you guys, all listening to this, you can, you know, you can Google that stuff. You can look up, you know, Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, Cocaine Anonymous, Heroin Anonymous. You can look those things up in your city, and every city has one, every county has one. If they don't, look up something close to it. But no, nobody has to die anymore because of this. I love addiction because it got me the life that I have, but I hate addiction because I continue to lose people as a result of it, you know? And people are always like, oh, you cry, you cry, you cry. Yeah, I cry. It's sad. It's some sad shit. People, I mean, all of the lives that are being lost out there, the children that were never born, you know? The careers that were never had, the marriages that were never made, you know? I mean, there's, on, there's so much loss as a result of drugs and alcohol. Hell yeah, I'm pissed about it. Hell yeah, I'm sad about it. We should all be sad about it. It's not a joke. And I never cry with her. I've only cried one time with her. And she looked at me, she said, do not do this to me at the casino. And I said, okay. It was right after her son Connor passed away. She said, don't do this. She said, this is not why I come here. I need to get out of my head. I said, okay. So we played tonight and I was way down and I play two machines. We're old people, okay? We play two machines. Two quarter machines that are 50 cent max. So, a 50 cents a spin, okay? It's about the cheapest machine you're going to find in these places. I play two, she plays two. But today when I came in there, she was playing one, one and then there was a space, one machine, and then another one. And she saved the two. So, we're like, I'm, we're sitting right next to each other like this. <laughs> With the machine. It's crazy. So, I went on the other side for a while. And I came back over, and uh, Patty decided she was going to go down to her progressives, where she won $800. We're stupid. We should have gone down there. But anyway, and I didn't have Mr. Pibb, so I had to drink coffee and Coke, and I love Coke. I can't stand real Coke. If you love it, hey, have at it, but I don't like it. And uh, Alex and I went and had Chinese tonight. We haven't had Chinese in forever, and I was so bitter when I went. I was like... I can't have any cramp. I was like, do you ever do this? And like, I mean, real world problems, right? Like you go to a restaurant and you're like, well, I, 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 I. I'm like, well, I can't have any crab meat ranking and I can't have any, you know, this chicken and that chicken. And Alex is like being so sweet. He's like, sweetie, I'm sure they have all kinds of good things on the menu that are vegetarian. And I'm like, <laughs> and so I got, um, Vegetable fried rice, which was absolutely delicious, and I have a little bit of it left home at home. And then I got um, four vegetable spring rolls, and I was totally full. We sat there and ate it, and then we came home, and we watched the finale of Project Runway, which I already knew, the Kataro one. And his, oh my God, gorgeous. Ah! But you know what, Marguerite, I really loved her collection too. And I loved Brandon's collection too. The only one I didn't really like was uh, Ayana, although I love her. I think she's amazing. Some of her stuff I liked, but the last dress, oh my God. If you guys watch Roger Cromwell, you'll know what I'm talking about. But, um... And then we watched Project Runway, and then we watched the reunion. Those t those twins, my God, kill a beast, right? 
And uh, then Alex was like going to sleep. He has a long day tomorrow. He, uh, his, so his brother is in town and we have not seen him the entire weekend. Like today he did stuff with friends all day long. And so he was like, well, maybe, so Tuesday's his birthday. So I guess we're all going out for his birthday on Tuesday. And then his brother is flying out on Wednesday. So I'm only going to see him like for one day. And there, so Alex got a bunch of Pacer tickets for tomorrow, basketball team, the Pacers, Indianapolis Pacers. And um, he was like, well, I only got four. And he's like, it's me, and then I'm taking Fufu, and then Carlos, his other brother, is going. And he was like, and I got the fourth ticket for you. And I said, okay. And then I was sitting around there tonight, and I was like doing some bills and stuff, and he goes, you really want to go tomorrow night, right? And I go, I mean, and let me just tell you, okay? Do I love to spend time with my family? Absolutely. Do I want to go to a Pacers game with nosebleed seats? Absolutely not. And I mean, I just, I don't care, you know? And Alex loves to go and he tries to get on that Megatron and all that stuff. It's cute. But I said, but if you guys, you know, like if you don't want me to go, I can go and then I can meet you guys for dinner or something before or after. He goes, well, he's like, I only have four tickets and my mom was kind of really wanting to go so she could spend time with Fufu. I said, honey, let her have the ticket. I don't care. I can meet you guys before or after. He was like, are you sure you're not going to be upset? And I said, no, not at all. Let her go. God, she never gets to spend any time with her son. It's not my son, you know? So they're going to go do that as a family tomorrow night. I'm real excited for them. So I don't know. Maybe I'll call up Liliana and uh, my sister-in-law and see if she wants to get dinner with the kids or something like that. But Tanya Jean comes home tomorrow from Florida. So I'm so excited. And, uh, so yeah. But anyway, so I was playing on one side of the machines and then I moved over to the other side of the machines and, um, Lori wasn't hitting anything. I hadn't hit anything. In fact, I went and took more money out, which I had no business doing. I had no business. I had just done my bills. So I never spend, like, here's the thing. Okay. The casino is a desperate place. Okay. It can be at times very depressing. You see people and you play next to people and they'll say things like, I shouldn't have come here tonight. This was my rent. Or I need to make a deposit tomorrow and I just spent all my deposit. Okay? You might want to check in to see what kind of problems you have if you're spending your rent at the casino. I don't ever spend money I don't have. So, and I think like some of these people take like two and three hundred dollars. I take like 60 bucks. So, I mean, I play these quarter machines. They're cheap, right? I just realized how fat I look tonight. Ignore my fatness. So, I, um, <clears throat> Alex's Christmas, somebody will relate to this out there. <clears throat> Alex's Christmas party is next weekend. Every year, when the day of the Christmas party, I always say to myself, next year I'm going to be super thin when I come and I'm going to shock them all, right? Yeah, I'm going to shock them all. I haven't lost one pound. No, I lost 23 pounds and then I gained 10 back and I'm just kind of there. So I've really stuck at like losing 13 pounds. Um, <clears throat> I'm losing my voice for some reason because we were shouting over the Christmas music. My God. They usually pay, play like this heavy metal stuff that I can't see and it drives me nuts. But anyway... So I came on the other side and I had taken some money out and I had like $40 left. And so I had a 20 in one and a 20 in another machine. And Lori goes, you'll probably hit on that machine because that's the machine I've been playing all night long. I go, oh no, Lori, I'll never play, right? And she had $20 left. So she goes, I'm going to just go play Kevin's machine. This is like the machine that like her husband, he doesn't play the machines we play. He plays like these video machines. And I go, just play with me. I see you only have $20 left anyway, and I'll leave when you're done, and I'll just take money home. And she's like, I know. She's like, but if I go over to Kevin's machine, she's like, you could come over there with me. And I was like, okay. And I was like, God, I really kind of want to play these machines out. But I was trying to be a good friend, so I said, okay. And she goes, well, no, we'll just stay here. She goes, we'll just put, uh, she's like, it hasn't hit, so it probably won't hit. And I said, okay. So I started playing these machines. Well, I hit, um, double sevens tripled, which is 120. She goes, I knew you were going to hit. I played that machine all night long. I didn't hit one thing. And then I hit, um, I got it up to like, I don't know, like 160 or something. So I went and I cashed it out and I gave her, my, I gave her like 40 bucks. So <clears throat> we come back and she's like, well, I don't, I don't know if I want to play this anymore. It's not hitting anything. And right as she said that, she hit like these whites, which is like $10. It's like 40 credits. And I said, are you going to, you want to move? Sweetie, what do you want to do? She goes, I guess I'll just play this down. 
Five minutes later, she hit $225. I go, oh my God, Lori. She was like, this always happens to me on the nights that I come and I play, um, that, that I pay that stupid funeral bill. She goes, every time I do and I come those nights, I always win. And she goes, and I haven't even won. She was like, but I'm a little bit ahead now. And I said, okay. She then hit $20 three times in a row. And then about 15 minutes later, she hit 225 again, which is like unheard of on these machines. So I left and she was still playing. Cause I was like, girl, I gotta go home. I got things to do tomorrow. And she was like, don't worry about it. I'm gonna leave her in about a half an hour anyway. She'll leave at eight o'clock in the morning. Um, <laughs> but when I left, she was like 600 up. I was like, Lori, I'm so happy for you. She was like, thank you. She was like, I'm so happy I get out of my mind for a little bit. She was like, you know, I she's like, we had a good time, didn't we? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, are you leaving ahead? And I go, yeah, I'm leaving ahead. Why? I wasn't, but it's okay. <laughs> it doesn't matter, you know? <laughs> she looked at me, she goes, you're not really leaving ahead, are you? I go, I just kind of smiled. She goes, oh, let me give you $40. I go, no. And then as I turned, she tucked $40 in my back pocket. So I'm like, girl, whatever. She's like, you gave it to me. I was like, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> That's what we do for each other. When one of us is down, we give the other one money when we're at the casino, you know? And then you kind of come out all ahead anyway. So, so I did leave about exactly what I came in with. I think I was down like 40 bucks or something like that. I can't even remember how much down I was. But we had a good time and I love her so much. I cannot imagine losing one child, let alone two, you know? I've been wanting to tell her story on here for a while, but I didn't feel like I had permission to do that. I think it's important when we tell other people's stories that we ask them permission, you know? really pretty night outside. All of these little towns, I drive on this country road when I'm going home, and then I drive into Noblesville, and then I drive from Noblesville into Indianapolis. It's like a total of about 40 minute drive. If I took the interstate, it would be about 30 minutes, 25, 30 minutes, but I like the old country roads, and there's all these like Christmas lights, these little houses, there's like these little uh, towns that you pass through, and they're literally, like, there will be a sign for the town, and it will literally be a four-way stop sign, and um, then there's like, you know, six houses right there. And I always wonder, like, back in the day, were they like a general store and a post office? You know, like, what were they? So, I actually didn't think I would talk this long. I'm starting that on an Audible book. Uh, I finished last night A Very, Very Bad Thing by Jeffrey Self. It's one of the most fantastic books I've ever read. And it is such an important book. It's about a gay kid that is forced to go to pray the gay away camps and retreats. And what happens. It's incredible. It's so good. He wrote Drag Teen, and I wrote, read that last year. About a teenager that wants to be in a drag pageant. It was hilarious. But this book was not... I mean, this book had funny moments, but it was very, very serious. And um, now I'm starting Wonder by, by R.J. Palacio, who... It just came out as the movie. And I want to see the movie so bad, but I want to read the book, too. And I have the book at home, but I just bought it on Audible because it was on sale for, like, three seventy five dollars or something. So I was like, well, you can't beat that with an Audible book, so I'll just buy I'll just listen to that. So I'm going to start listening to that, and I'm really excited because everybody tells me it's fantastic. And uh, I'm at 29 minutes, and the camera's about to shut off because it stops at 30 minutes. So I will see you guys tomorrow, and um, I love you. Be safe. Take care of each other. Bye.